بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين If we were to consider all of the pleasures of the dunya and all what the dunya has to offer the best of what the dunya has to offer everything in the world and we were to compare that to the salah we just recently completed praying the dunya will lose the dunya will lose if we were to compare what the dunya has to offer everything in the dunya with the salah we just prayed and I'm not talking about the fajr I'm not talking about salatul fajr I'm talking about the two rak'atain before Salat al-Fajr. Comparing that to all what the dunya has to offer, the dunya would lose. And this is this from the hadith of Rasulullah where he talks about the two rak'atain, the two units of prayer before the fajr. He says, Rak'ata al-Fajri khayrun min dunya wa ma fiha. That the two units before fajr is better than the entire dunya and whatever is in it. Better than the entire dunya and whatever is in it. So this is a highly emphasized sunnah, the two rak'atain before Salat al-Fajr. And this is a sunnah that Rasulullah would never leave. He would always pray it, the safari wal hadr Whether he was traveling, whether he was a resident, he would always pray this, and he would never leave it off. So this is an extremely important sunnah that we should never leave off, the two rak'atain before Salat al-Fajr. And as the hadith says, it is better than entire dunya and whatever is in it. So a person might look at this salah and they would see what Rasulullah says about it better than the entire dunya and whatever is in it. And a person might come to the conclusion, you might use a logical way of thinking, and you might come to the conclusion that this is a salah that it's very important. Rasulullah never left it. That means that this is a salah maybe I should prolong, right? And I should lengthen and I should take my time in it. And I should read longer portion and I should extend my rakur, and I should extend my sujood. You might go, uh, have that way of thinking if you use a uh, logical process of thinking, and you might come to that conclusion. And if you came to that conclusion, then you would be an exact opposite of the Sunnah of Rasulullah Because in reality, the Sunnah of Rasulullah was to make this two rak'atain very light, extremely light. And he would pray it very quickly, and he would not extend it, and he would not make it long, you would make it very short and very light. So if you came to that conclusion, you would be in opposition of the Sunnah of Rasulullah And this shows the danger of trying to use the intellect and trying to use logical way of thinking when it comes to determining how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't use our intellect to determine how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This comes down to following the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And on this point, there is a statement from Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali radiallahu an, collected by Imam Abu Dawood in his Sunan, where Imam Ali radiallahu ta'ala, he says, لَوْ كَانَ الدِّينُ بِالرَّأِي لَكَانَ أَسْفَلُ الْخُفِّ أَوْلَى بِالْمَسْحِ مِنْ أَعْلَى وَلَكِنْ وَلَقَدْ رَأَيْتُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم يَمْسَحُ عَلَى ظَهْرِ خُفَّيْهِ Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali radiallahu an, he says that if this religion had been my intellect and been my logic, then the bottom of the leather sock would have been more right, rightful to wipe over than the top. Right? We know that uh, if you are making wudu and you put on the leather sock, you can wipe over and that would be a valid wudu. Where do you wipe? You wipe on the top. You don't wipe at the bottom. Even though if you, if you follow the logical way of thinking, you would think that you would wipe on the bottom because that's where the dirt is, that's where the impurity is. However, Rasulullah Wasallam would wipe over the top. Right? He would wipe over the top and so Amir al-Mu'mini Ali radiallahu anhu he says that if the deen had been by logic and by intellect then we should have wiped over the bottom of the leather sock but he says I saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa wiping over the top of the leather sock so the sunnah of Fajr is something very extremely light Rasulullah sallallahu used to make this very light to the point where Aisha radiallahu anha she says talking about the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa as collected in, uh, by Imam al-Bukhari, she says, حَتَّى إِنِّي لَأَقُولْ هَلْ قَرَأَ بِأُمْ الْكِتَابِ She used to say to herself, did he even recite Al-Fatiha? This is how light he used to make these two rak'atayn. Did he even recite Al-Fatiha? And of course he recited Al-Fatiha, because there is no salah if you don't recite Al-Fatiha. Everyone must recite Al-Fatiha in the salah. But he would make these salahs so 
light and so quick that she used to even think to herself, did he even recite Al-Fatiha? That's how quick he used to make these two rak'atayn before Fajr. The scholars have discussed, so now we can, this is where we can use our mind to uh, give a reason why Rasulullah would make these rak'atayn short, short. We wouldn't use our mind to determine how to worship Allah, but then afterwards, after Rasulullah has showed us the way, then we can uh, discuss why he made it short. And this is what the scholars have done. They dis discussed why did he make these two rak'atayn short and light and quick. And a few different reasons have been given. One of them is that he would make it light and quick so that he can pray the Fajr in its early time. Because if he were to delay and, make, and lengthen the two rak'atayn before Fajr, then this would cause him to pray the Fajr in a bit of a later time. And the time for Fajr is very short. It's not like the Dhuhr or Asr where you have uh, two, three hours to pray. It's a shorter time span. So, so that he can pray the Fajr in its early time, he would keep these two rak'atayn short. This is one view of the scholars. Another view is that he would keep it light so that he can keep his energy for the Fajr. The Fajr would be a salah that he would lengthen and he would pray a little longer and he would extend the recitation in the Fajr so, so that he could keep his energy and keep his uh, freshness for Salatul Fajr. He would keep the two rak'atayn short. This is another view, second view of the scholars. And another third view is that he would pray light Mimicking how he would open up his Qiyam. When Rasulullah used to pray Qiyam at night, he used to start off with two very light rak'ahs as well. So the first thing he would pray in the night was two very short rak'ahs, and then afterwards he would pray the rest and lengthen them. So these are three different views of the scholars of why he would make it light, regardless of with the reason why he made it light. We should, when we pray the Sunnah, make it very light, make it quick, don't delay it, don't extend it. Rasulullah SAW would pray it, he would uh, recite Surah Al-Kafirun in the first rak'ah and Surah Al-Ikhlas in the second rak'ah. And this is something that we should uh, always try to do and never try to miss, never miss this uh, sunnah, this very important sunnah. As Rasulullah SAW said, it is better than the entire dunya and whatever is in it. Wallahu ta'ala alam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanahu wa bihamdik nashinu la ilaha illa ant nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.